Hey everybody, today we're going to be working on a BMW 325XI. Um, it looks like we've got low cylinder compression in cylinder one. It's coming in around uh, 60 uh, PSI. Uh, before we do anything, we're just going to run some tests on this and uh, write everything down so that we can compare that later on. So, let's see what's up with this vehicle. All right, um, so what we've got here is the Creator uh, BMW uh, code reader. And we've got it plugged in, the key's on the second position. And we're going to diagnose 3 Series. Uh, this is a 2004, so it's an E46 model. Uh, we're going to look in the driver engine. It's going to scan the engine codes. And what we come up with is read trouble codes. Here we go. Uh, we've got 7D activation electric fan. It's I've got a bad electric fan. It's not kicking on. Uh, but we, here's the real problem here. Um, it's a misfire cylinder one. And we're trying to diagnose this. And what we've done so far is we've changed the spark plugs and then we uh, swapped the coil packs around uh, even uh, went out and got a new coil pack and put in there and it doesn't look like that it's uh, uh, anything to do with the coil packs or the spark plugs so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to test the fuel pressure and we're going to go ahead and test um, the vacuum pressure and we're also going to do a pressure test on each cylinder uh, just to see what's going on with the pressure in each one. All right, so let's do that next. All right, so here we are. Um, you can see I've taken some things off of the engine already. Uh, basically, we took the covers off um, so we could get to the coil packs here. I also wanted to be able to get to the fuel rail and we'll test the vacuum here uh, at this uh, CCV line. So what I like to do is go ahead and, and just take notes on everything so you can uh, kind of compare before and after if you, if you try different parts or whatever. Uh, so it's a good thing to do just to keep notes on all these tests. So we've done the code reader. Um, that ended up being a fan and cylinder number one misfire. Uh, next we're going to do fuel pressure. Alright, so what we're going to do now is check the fuel pressure here at the fuel rail. Uh, simply, uh, we're just going to use this Harbor Freight uh, $15 pressure gauge and all you have to do is take the cap off of the valve, the straighter valve here and you may want to put some uh, paper towels or a rag underneath. Go ahead and screw this in real fast. You're going to have a little bit of fuel leak out, that's okay. You may want to wear gloves or safety goggles. I'm going to hand this uh, off to my assistant and we're going to turn the fuel pump on and see where we're at. Um, it should go ahead and pressurize a little bit, probably around three bars. Okay. You get anything? Okay, so we're just under three bars of pressure, uh, right at 40 psi. So we're going to start the car. We're going to see if this pressure increases to around three and a half bars. Uh, ideally is where you want to be. Uh, somewhere around 50 PSI. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it's, it's really close to three and a half bars. Uh, we're right underneath 50 PSI. I think that's good. We're going to turn it off now and we're going to leave this hooked up 
and we'll let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and see if that pressure bleeds off. If it does, that means there's probably a bad check valve uh, somewhere in the system, maybe in the fuel pump. So let's, let's just let this sit for a little while. back now we've let the, the car sit for about 15 20 minutes and we can see the fuel pressure is holding at 40 psi just under three bars so that's a good thing I think we're going to move on now to um, go ahead and test the uh, let's do the vacuum next so once you're finished with the fuel pressure test I want to go ahead and do vacuum. So we're going to run the car. Uh, first we're going to have William clean up here a little bit. Get any fuel that's spilled. And we're going to run the car and check this upper vacuum hose. See what kind of pressure we get. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the uh, vacuum gauge. I'm just going to tap in right here and see what we get on that. So we didn't get any reading at all, really, uh, just barely anything at all. Not good. Uh, put that back on. Now I think I'm going to try to uh, test the vacuum off the back of the manifold here. There's another port we can tap into. Okay, so on the back of this intake manifold, there's another vacuum port. I've got the gauge plugged in pretty tight. So we're going to take a reading there and see what the manifold says. Okay, so 25 is what we got on the back of the intake manifold right here. Be sure that you put the cap back on or you'll have a massive vacuum leak in your engine. It's a little tricky to just, it's right there it is. Okay. So next, let's uh, check the uh, cylinder pressure. We'll put a pressure gauge on each cylinder and see what we've got. So we're going to pressure test each cylinder now. We've got a gauge kit from, again, Harbor Freight. Uh, you know, if you don't have any money like me, you go to Harbor Freight. <laughs> Simply, we're going to take these coil packs out one by one. 
and let's go ahead and take out the cylinder one spark plug. Give me the magnet off of uh, the refrigerator over there. This socket doesn't have the little grabber stuff, so I'm just going to use a magnet here. Thank you. Roll that one out. And again, these are new spark plugs, so we kind of roll, rolled these out as the culprit. So now we plug in our hose, put the line in there. Nice and snug. Okay, this other end clips on. And we're going to run the car and see what kind of pressure we have here. So if maybe you can hold that right there. There's some help. This is a check valve, so it'll relieve the pressure. Make sure you don't pull it or push it. Okay. Ready. Okay, so it looks like we're just above 60 pounds. Looks like it's getting a little bit higher. Okay. And it looks like that's about it. So it's right at 80 uh, pounds of pressure. It's pretty low. Uh, I don't think that's enough pressure for combustion. So let's let's check the other cylinders and see what we've got. All right, so we're going to move on to cylinder number two. This this is a new coil pack, so we've we've done some troubleshooting with the coil packs and, and rolled them out as well. I know some folks have said that they've had trouble with one coil pack. They replaced it. We're still having trouble. They took it to the dealer and they replaced all six coil packs, and that's what fixed it. So I mean, hopefully that's not the issue here. But I think the low compression is definitely an issue in cylinder one. Let's just do a little comparison. All right. The last one was at 80. So yeah. We can see. We'll see if this one's. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It actually changes. Okay, put the line in there nice and tight. If you'll hold the gauge in front of the camera, I'll start the car. Alright, so now we're up to, looks like 110 maybe, okay, we're getting up there now, 120, that's, that's about, I mean that's in the green at least, it looks like it's going to hold at 120, okay, right that one down. Okay, give it a minute. See if it builds some pressure here. All right, now it's going up. Hold it real steady. Yeah, we're at 120, a little over 120, not much. So, on to the next cylinder. All right, this is going to be cylinder number four. And let it 
that build up. Down. All right, cylinder four looks a little low. I would probably say that's around 100. All right, uh, this is going to be cylinder number five. Build up. It's a little better. That's going to be right around 100, also. So, chalk that up to 100. Okay, this is going to be cylinder number five. Let's see what we get here. Oh, I'm sorry, cylinder six. All right, so this is what we get on cylinder number six. Okay. Hopefully, there we go. Going up better. It's right around 120. So 120, that's where it's going to stay. Alright, here's cylinder number six. We'll see what we get. It's not. 